Hello students! Welcome to our online class. It's me, Ma'am Jen, and I will be your teacher in Heli 6. To start with our lesson, let's begin with a prayer. Diyos na banal, maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong ibinigay ninyo sa aming lahat upang makapag-aral. Salamat po sa pagbibigay ninyo sa amin ng isang guro na matyagang hinuhubog ang aming isipan sa araw-araw. Salamat din po sa aming mga magulang sa patuloy na pagkakaloob sa amin ng aming mga pangangailangan. Kabayan naman po ninyo kami upang makita ng aming mga mata ang mga aral na ibinibigay ng aming tagapagturo. Bigyan niyo po kami ng talas ng isip upang matalo sa mga bagay na kailangan naming malaman. At nubayan mo po kami sa aming mga landas na piniling lakarin. Wala po kami magagawa kung wala ang iyong tulong at mga pagpapala. Gabayan din naman ninyo ang aming guro upang maibigay niya ng lubusan ang mga paliwanag na aming kakalanganin sa pagharap sa kinabukasan. Bigyan din naman ninyo siya ng matyagang kalooban upang mapatawad ang aming pagkukulang. Sa harap ninyo at sa inyong buktong na anak, inaalay namin ang araw na ito. Amen. In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss with you Lesson 3 Fish Culture Fish culture means the art of science of raising aquatic products under a controlled or semi-controlled environment. Phases of fish culture, like meat, pork, and eggs. Fish is very important dish in our daily meal. Fish provides the protein in the diet of most Filipinos. In business, fish cultivation is a good source of income in terms of exports. It is also source of feeds for poultry. Part of the feeds for domestic fowls that are not derived from plants come from fish. Fish by products and other aquatic animals. What is fish culture? Fish culture is synonymous to fish farming or aquaculture. It simply means the growing of fish and other aquatic products from a very young stage like fry or fingerlings until they are large enough for human consumption or marketability. There are three major phases of fish culture. These are fish propagation, fish cultivation, and fish preservation. Let us now discuss first the fish propagation. It is the natural or artificial method of promoting reproduction and survival of fish. This is very important in fish culture. For without the fry or fingerlings, cultivation of fish is not possible. There must be enough and steady supply of fish seeds for the purpose of stacking. This is done in the propagation stage where breeders are kept and maintained in breeding tanks or ponds for spawning hatching and nursing the larva up to size, suitable for stacking and grow out of rearing ponds. Fish propagation is done either by natural method or by artificial method. There are two methods of fish propagation, natural method and artificial method. For natural method of propagation, the fish breeds and spawns in its natural cycle. For example, milk fish or bangus, tilapia or common carp. While for the artificial method, the fish reproduction is made ahead of the organism's natural reproductive cycle or during non-spawning season. How is it possible? Let us explore the general life cycle of a fish. Fish life cycles vary among species. However, fish progress through the following life cycle stages. The first stages of the life cycle of a fish is eggs. Fertilized eggs develop into fish. 
but most eggs do not survive to maturity even under the best conditions. Why? Threats to eggs include changes in water temperature and oxygen levels, flooding or sedimentation, predators, and disease. The next life cycle of the fish is the larva. Larva fish live off a yolk sac attached to their bodies. When the yolk sac is fully absorbed, the young fish are called fry. Fry are ready to start eating on their own. Fry undergo several more developmental stages, which vary by species. As they mature into adults, young fish are generally considered fry during their first few months. Next is the juvenile. The time first spent developing from fry into reproductively mature adults varies among species. Most fish do not survive become adults. Threats to survival includes the following. Fluctuation in water temperature, changes in oxygen levels, competition for habitat, and predators. Next is the adult. When fish are able to reproduce, they are considered adults. The time it takes to reach maturity varies among species and in individual fish. Fish with shorter lifespans reach maturity faster. And for the last one, for the life cycle of a fish is the spawning. Female fish release eggs into water. And male fish fertilize eggs by releasing milk. Not all eggs are fertilized. Some fish spawn each year after reaching maturity. Others spawn at intervals every four years for example while others spawn only once and then die artificial propagation as practiced in different parts of the world may vary depending on local conditions and facilities it may start with the collection and further rearing of naturally produced egg spawn or fry or with the production of the egg itself through artificial inducement followed by the controlled fertilization, hatching, and rearing of larva and fry. Artificial propagation therefore involves human intervention in the process of natural propagation and has the advantages. First, for the better rates of fertilization and hatching. Second, protection against enemies and unfavorable environmental conditions. And lastly, for the better conditions for growth and survival. Let us explore the classification of fish species. Fish can be classified into different types based on their habitats, outer layers, and nutritional values. According to the types of water in which they live and their preferential location, fish are two types. The first one is freshwater fish. It includes the following. Here are some examples of freshwater or river fish. Bangus, mudfish or dalag, hito, and biang puti. Other freshwater fish or river fish includes the following. Ayungin, martinico, gorami, tilapia, and carpa. Saltwater fish. Fish lives in the sea. Saltwater fish includes the following. Lapu-lapu, galunggong, hasa-hasa, and bisugo. And here are some other aquatic resources includes the following. Amphibians. Amphibians are animals that can live in water and have lungs and legs. Scientists think that amphibians evolved from ancestors of lungfish like fishes. Amphibians include the following. Frog, sea cucumber, turtle, coral, seaweeds, and sponges. Crustaceans, anthropod animals characterized by a hard, close-fitting shell that is shed periodically. Crabs, lobsters, shrimps, and crayfish are examples of crustaceans animals. Here are some crustaceans animals. It includes the following. Shrimp, lobster, 
prawns, crabs, and crayfish. What is mollusk? Pilum mollusca, named from the Latin word molluscus, meaning soft. Mollusks are soft bodied animals that usually have an internal or external shell. Mollusk includes the following snails, green mussels, clams, squids, oyster, and scallops. And now let us identify the kinds of fish in artificial inland waters. The first one for the kinds of fish found in artificial inland waters is carp or carpa. It has double barbells at the mouth and heavy serrated spine in dorsal and anal fin. The second one we have catfish or hito. Lives in swamps, canals, and ponds. It can stay long without water. It feeds on insects, worms, and shrimps. But since it prefers to eat decayed protein food, sometimes it is classified as a scavenger. Mudfish or dalag. It lives in muddy canals. It is a freshwater fish. Its color is black and it has a hard body. Tilapia. This is a hardy fish that attains maturity at about 4 months from fry stage. Tilapia are mainly freshwater fish inhabiting shallow streams, ponds, rivers, and lakes, less commonly found living in brackish water. Milkfish or bangus. This is a freshwater fish raised in fish pads. They are bright silvery fish of the open seas. Lastly, for the kinds of fish found in artificial inland waters, we have gorami. This is a large freshwater fish, fast grower, and a vegetarian. It breeds freely and can survive extreme population. That would be all from this topic. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you and keep safe.